Hello my friends, my name is Kirk Nolan and I am a comedian and a suicide survivor. For those of you who have not been following my vlog, let me explain to you what you're watching and what's going on. I survived uh, an attempt to take my life and for the next at least 12 months I'm trying to reconstruct the story to figure out how somebody like me who once felt so strong and so powerful in the world could lose himself so far down the rabbit hole that he couldn't get out of. You see I've always considered myself to be a lion. I've been born into this world big, bigger than most. I'm uh, six foot three. I am uh, loud, opinionated, and never afraid of many things in life. Now, I always felt that whatever challenges came forward, uh, I could take them on. What I found over the years, though, is that even a lion can get taken down. All it takes is the right pack to begin to circle you and begin to nip at you and to take little bites out of you over long periods of time chipping away at your self-esteem, chipping away at your belief system, chipping away at your character. Until one day you look in the mirror and the lion that you once were is nothing but just a shadow of what it once was. And you're trying to figure out how that happened and how you got to that point. This is what I'm trying to do with my life now. I'm trying to figure out some answers and I'm inviting people to come along in the journey to try to find out some answers for themselves because I almost became a dead lion and luckily um, some other fellow lions came along and they've helped me now to become strong again. They've nursed me back to health and reminded me of how powerful, strong and, and honest and uh, trustworthy and that I do belong. This is what I know thus far and this is what I can try to help you to understand if you're dealing with anything like this. Last Christmas I went for a walk with my dogs. The next thing I remember was I woke up in the emergency room of a hospital. No understanding what had gone on. Frightened, scared, sad, and depressed my wife had explained to me that I had spent time in intensive care and that I had been found in the cold and, and I was 80 degrees when they found me uh, if you don't know how bad that is the doctor explained it this way dead people are warmer than that they had not expected me to live through the night and when I did start to show some signs of recovery my wife told me that the doctors had said to her that I would probably end up being a vegetable because I had a lot of rapid eye movement that was going on and you add that with complete renal failure chances are I was in store for some brain damage. Coming home was a very difficult thing for me because I had experienced a lot of trauma which is why a lot of people who come out of a traumatic situation like that uh, find themselves using drugs, alcohol, and things to sort of quiet their mind because they're dealing with so much and you tackle that on with severe depression over things that you've now lost and all of those things combined can set people off into this very very dark path which is the reason why people need to understand when you're dealing with a loved one and you're dealing with deep deep depression and sorrow and 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 hurt the last thing you want to do is belittle people and make them feel more alone and leave them alone. The worst thing that can happen is for people not to love you, not to, not to find a way to, even if they're in their own hurt and their own pain, to drive you further and further down that rabbit hole, to drive you further and further into the darkness. And that's what it was happening to me family abandoned me, my wife abandoned me, people stopped talking to me, people stopped reaching out to me, people started to blame me for not getting up fast enough, for not fixing myself fast enough. Why was I depressed? Why was I in such a bad mood? Why wasn't I the same person that I was before all of this happened? How 
how had I become this different person? How could I how could I've changed so much? All I was doing was just surviving it seemed like just trying to get through the next day and the next day and the next day and it didn't matter what I did and what medication I took it just got worse and worse and worse and this is a typical story of what happens to people when they go through such traumatic events because if you've had any kind of traumatic event in your life all it takes is one major event like this like what happened to me to start to trigger all those other events that have happened to you even since you were a child and your brain becomes just this TV that is just switching channels on and off and on and off and just bringing you thoughts and memories things that you can't control anymore you can't understand you become agitated angry upset and no matter how much you reach out to the people that you love those people keep slamming the door in your face so I guess the point of this video is the point of all my videos I am making a commitment to use the rest of my life to make sure that what is happening to me right now never happens to somebody else. Because when an event like this happens and people isolate you and they blame you and they create an environment that makes you feel hopeless and ashamed, the next step in all of that is going to be somebody's gonna feel so worthless, so ashamed and so alone that they're going to want to kill themselves and if they don't get it right the first time they're going to try to do it again and again and again until they do get it right so when someone goes through some horrible traumatic event that triggers all of these things that happen to them don't be like the people that have been in my life and create an environment that only makes somebody hurt even worse what has happened here is an injury and I'm dealing with it every single day, trying to figure out how to get my memory back. I'm, I'm having deep emotional and psychological problems here. Y you just don't abandon people. You don't leave them alone. That's the biggest thing I want to stress. You don't leave people alone. If you love people, you'll be there for them. You know, marriage and love and commitment isn't about when it gets tough and you're just tired and you're worn out and your tanks are drained, that you just walk away from somebody who needs you. No, it's about sticking it out. It's about being there for somebody and making sure you're there when things get tough. And life throws us a lot of curveballs. It creates a lot of... Life... Life throws us a lot of curveballs and it creates a lot of problems for us. And 